Hey guys, my name's Morgan, and way back in 2009, I scored a 50 in studio arts. Straight up, I'm no artist. I can't draw to save myself, and my photos are perpetually blurry. To get this mark, I thought strategically, and I played the game. That's what I'm going to be talking about today. This is just a quick video to give you my top tips on how to do well specifically in relation to studio. This advice obviously won't work for everyone. I'm just letting you know what worked for me. So here goes. My first tip is consistency. Your teachers tell you that working consistently in all subjects is key to doing well in BCE. And while this is true, it's particularly true of studio. Think of it this way. If you stuff up on a sack, it is individually not worth that much and so won't affect your overall mark drastically. On the other hand, each task in studio, that is, each folio and the exam, is worth about a third of your grade. This means that if you get a low mark on one folio, doing well becomes significantly tougher. My second tip is be thorough. What I'm talking about here is the type of considerations you put into your folio. I've seen a lot of strong artists over the years throw out their early drafts, test photographs, color palettes, you name it. This is the stuff you need to include in your folio. Show your teacher that you are testing and learning things. On top of that, you need to write about each of these steps. Learn to ask yourself key questions. What did I do? Why did I do it? How did it connect with my theme? Do I hope to continue on this idea or piece in the future? My third tip is be creative. This seems kind of obvious in an art subject. But what I mean is, give the person who looks at your folio something they didn't expect and would be excited to see. For my final pieces, I designed installation pieces that were composed of videos and physical items arranged around those videos. So basically like designing a room. To show the assessor I had really thought about my pieces, I went one step further and I discussed what lighting I wanted and why, as well as crowd control of the room. For your piece, this might mean taking the time to consider framing, arrangement of different items, or something else. The point is, consider not just the piece itself, but perhaps be creative about the way you present it. Things you might want to think about are light boxes or combining several pieces into one to create something like triptych or a photo array. Don't feel limited by what others are doing. Be different. My fourth tip is get the details right. In studio, you're encouraged to focus on your art, but there are still fundamental criteria that you must meet. Things like the exploration proposal are essential to your folio mark. Don't leave these to the last minute and go through several drafts. Ask your teacher to read it over in advance, and if they don't have time to, get a past student or a parent to read it over. It has to explain your idea, not just in the way you see it, but in a way that makes sense to an external reader. These details are boring, but they make a huge difference in the marks. My fifth tip today is take the exam seriously. There's a tendency in studio to disregard the exam when it's held in comparison to other VCE exams. This is because it is worth less than the average VCE exam, and there is less content than most subjects, admittedly. But this is a mistake. The exam is still one third of your grade, as I mentioned before, so you can't let it slide and still expect a strong mark. Think of it this way, all of that time you put into your folio, well, based on marks, you should be devoting the same amount of time to the exam. Let that sink in. The next few points are about how to approach this exam, which I've now convinced you to take seriously. That takes me on to our sixth tip, know your specialty. The studio exam offers you a great deal of freedom in choosing what to talk about. For analyzing artworks, you are free to choose from the insert, which normally has about 11 pieces to choose from. And that's all different kinds of works. Know in advance what suits you. As I said before, I'm no artist, and I know nothing about materials, techniques, and processes used in painting or sculpting. I consistently scored poorly on practice questions, where I was trying to write about those type of pieces. Then I realized there was always a silver gelatin photo and a film still two things I do know a lot about. I practiced my answers for these types of pieces, and I knew the content of those answers inside and out. Choose artworks that make sense to you, and get comfortable sorting through the insert under timed conditions in advance. My seventh tip is know the exam. This point is key for any subject, obviously, but again, especially for studio arts. Straight up, this subject does not have a huge amount of content. This means that the exam writers 
don't have a great deal of choice about what they ask you about. Each year, they're going to ask you about your gallery visit, your artist study, preparation and presentation of works, legal and moral rights of the artist, and conservation. These questions look pretty similar year to year, if you'll notice when you go over past exams. And there is usually only ever one curveball, if at all. Print out every exam as far back as the current study design goes on both the Engage website and VCAUS website. Read through them and see the patterns. This is the perfect subject to prepare answers for and no dot point summaries of, because chances are you can correctly predict what's going to be asked come exam time. My eighth tip today is summarize the content. This is an obvious point and I'm not gonna harp on about it, but studio, unlike English or history that would require a great deal of explanation, can be learnt in summary or dot point form very easily. From here to creating your notes, I recommend you use the wiki as a bit of a guide. Go through all of the different sections and reduce your notes down into the summary version of what's being explained on here. You will see that it is totally achievable to memorize that info once it's down into that form. My ninth tip today is read the question. It's my final tip for today and it's one that I hope you take into the actual exam. Studio questions are phrased in a way where if you miss one word, you're likely to lose a lot of marks. Of examples of this are using two artists you have studied this year discuss one work of each that engage with the idea of so forth. This type of question often loses students because they end up talking about only one artist or two of their paintings or some other variation on that O's numbers. There's a similar problem when students are asked to discuss multiple ideas such as materials, techniques, and processes as well as artistic inspiration. Make sure you are clear on the task before embarking on it. Doing practice exams will help you work out where the marks are to ensure that you've written the right thing and enough of it. All right, that's all from me for now, but I hope those tips help. More than anything, I want you to take away that this subject was a great choice and I hope you have some fun with it. What I used to do every day when I got home from school was spend the first hour working on my folio with music on before jumping into homework for my other subjects, which was always essays. This made studio feel like a break, and I really came to appreciate the time spent on my folio as being quite relaxing. Make it the same for yourself. Good luck for the year, and don't forget to make use of the huge resource that is the Studio Arts Notes on this wiki.